Hello there, it's Ed. We're uh, a day away from the start of the Pirates season, so I figured I'd give it up a uh, little bit of a season preview for the 2020 Pirates season, uh, such as it is, this extremely weird, historically weird, uh, not even half season that we're gonna have, 60 games. Uh, it's weird trying to think about something like, you know, this at a time like this, but uh, it, it's, it's going to be nice to go back into the uh, into the swing of things, make it seem a little bit normal. Um, for the record, I always try and, and predict the Pirates record beforehand. I think I have a good uh, track record being pretty close. This year, I think the Pirates will go 26 and 34, which is not very good, but they're not very good. But I think they're not as bad as I think people seem to want to think they are. Um, I, I, I got the roster pulled up here, and I'm going to be honest with you, I still have trouble remembering exactly what the rules are with regards to how many people you can have on a roster this year, just because it's so different because of COVID. There's a whole bunch of new rules that will be in effect for, you know, three months or whatever it is. But it's weird. You go you go up and down the, the Pirates roster, and there's literally a couple of people that I, I don't even know who they are. Um, where is there? There's a pitcher named Robbie Erlin. I don't know who the hell that is. Um, and there's a infielder named Philip Evans. I looked up Philip Evans. Uh, apparently played like 30 games for the Mets over the last couple of years, and the Pirates apparently picked him up as a minor league free agent in December. I try to actually. I don't pay that much attention to the the the, the Pirates during the off season. It's just because that stuff. It's such a long off season normally. Um, and I just try and separate it, you know. Um, so when they make moves like that, you know, five months later, or in this case, you know, seven, eight, eight months later, whatever it is, I look at the roster and see again, I'm Phil Evans, the most generic name, you know, you can think of. And apparently he's number 64 and is going to hit, you know, has hit like 210 in his career. Um, but, you know, looking at the roster, there's actually a bunch of names. While there are a bunch of names that, are unfamiliar and make you think, oh, they can't be very good. There's actually a bunch of um, names that are familiar, and I think one of the things that's important, and I think will play a big difference in, in this respect, will play to the Pirates' benefit this year, is the fact that there's a DH now in the NL, which I don't like overall as a rule, but I think one thing that the DH does is it takes away the importance of having a good bench, um, because if you have a, a pitcher in your line, if you're going to be pinch hitting for them, a bunch in the later innings of a game. So you actually need to play your bench players. You're going to pinch hit guys, you know, two or three times a game. Now that you don't have a DH, teams still do pinch hit every now and then, but they don't do it nearly as frequently. And so I think the Pirates' bench is terrible, but their starting lineup is, like, it's not great, but I think it's better than people give it credit for. I mean, Stallings is your catcher. He's been okay. He hasn't been terrible. No, this will be his first full year as an actual starter. Uh, first base is Josh Bell. Who knows if he'll play the whole... Well, I mean, it's a, that's the thing, too. It's like a 60-game season. The, the trade deadline is August 31st, which means, you know, they have like 30 games to play with him if they want to trade him at the trade deadline. Um, I don't think they'll trade him during the season. I don't know if they'll trade him in the offseason, but I think he'll have a full season of Josh Bell. Then you've got Adam Frazier at second base, Kevin Newman at shortstop. Both those guys are all right hitting. Newman had a good year hitting last uh, last year. Third base, uh, Colin Moran, who... Colin Moran, I feel, is one of those guys that, like, would be really mediocre in Pittsburgh, and the minute he left here, he'd be good. Somebody like Charlie... Well, I always like Charlie Morton, but somebody like Charlie Morton, right? Or, like, the minute he's gone, it's, why did they let go of that guy? Or, to an extreme example, Jose Bautista. Though, when Jose Bautista, like, Colin Moran ain't hitting, like, 56 home runs, but... I don't know. Colin Moran has potential, but if he ever realizes it, that's the problem. Then your outfield is where things get weird, and to start the season, Gregory Polanco is on the tested positive for COVID-19 list, so it'll take a few days for him to get back, but I believe he just tested negative the other day. I think they have to wait a couple days, though, for him to still come back. But then your other outfielders, they don't have Starling Marte anymore. That's the big hit to the offense. Um, but you've still got Ke uh, Brian Reynolds, who was pretty good last year. Hit I want to say 315 or something like that. Um, but then your corner outfield, when Re when 
Polanco isn't there is what's stressful because that's the thing too. Even when Polanco comes back, you don't know how long he's actually going to be healthy because he's never healthy. Um, and the, are you going to get good Polanco or are you going to get bad Polanco? Because for half his career, it's been this mediocre Polanco. And then you have these little bright spots that make you, oh, okay, he's going to be decent now. And then half the time he isn't. But it's your first, your, you know, you, Reynolds in center, or no, Reynolds in left, Polanco in right. Center field is where it gets weird because you've got like Gerard Dyson, who they picked up over the offseason. And then you've got, sorry, I'm filming this with my camera because. I, or with my cell phone because I was going to film it with my iPad and the ankle made me look terrible. So I'm trying to do this one-handed while looking at the roster. Um, no, and then in uh, center field, your options are Gerard, Gerard Dyson, who I was looking up his stats earlier, and in his 10-year major league career has only hit more than two home runs in a season twice. Last year was his career high of seven, and there was another year he, where he hit five. But other than that, he's had a max of two in his 10-year career. So do not expect any power from him. And then your other uh, outfield starting option looks like uh, Guillermo Aridia, who's one of those guys that I remember when they picked him up, but I know, I, looking at his stats, it's like, do you remember Gorky Hernandez? He's Gorky Hernandez. So I don't expect him to make any sort of memorable contribution to the team. And then as like your backup outfielder, you've got Jason Martin, one of the people that was required in the Garrett Cole trade. And I actually like him, but it seems like they prioritize Heredia and uh, Dyson over Martin, but we'll see. I don't know. But the, the important thing is, once Polanco's back, two thirds of your starting outfielders are Polanco and Reynolds, who are okay. So I don't know. That that's your 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 starting hitters. But then the problem is, and then as far as DH is concerned, it seems like Jose Osuna is going to do that a lot, or they'll move people around. But those would be your nine hitters, um, and Osuna has. I forget if it was last year or the year before that. Osuna started out, had like seven home runs in like the first two months. It was like, hey, he's going to be decent power-wise. And then he finished with like ten. Um, Osuna's not terrible, but he's not going to be great. But like I said, it's a thing where, and, and then after those nine hitters, nothing. A whole bunch of nothing. Um, so, but that's the thing. Now they play with DH, so that means you might not have a bench or don't use your bench a lot, so... I could play their advantage. But then pitching is where it gets interesting because their pitching was terrible last year. It was supposed to be their strength going into the year, and then everybody tanked. Um, so this year you've got no Jamison Tyone. He would have been the ace. You don't have Chris Archer. He would have been Chris Archer. <laughs> and um, So this year you do have uh, Joe Musgrove is the number one starting pitcher. Great. He, you know. Joe Musgrove would have been like... Kip Wells. He's, he's Kip Wells. He would be a very good pitcher on a not very good team. And the uh, number four or five pitcher on a... That, the, here's an interesting thing about Joe Musgrove, I think. I think Joe Musgrove is similar to Jeff Locke, but I think Joe Musgrove looks better because of the, ca the surrounding character he's around with. Jeff Locke's numbers actually weren't terrible most of his time with the Pirates, but he was surrounded by good players, and so it made him look bad by comparison. Joe Musgrove is kind of, you know bad players around him. Um, so they one pitcher they do get back uh, in the starting rotation this year is uh, Chad Cool. He was out all last year, and he's very similar to Joe Musgrove. Uh, Trevor Williams is back. Trevor Williams was good in 2018 and then bad in 2019. So it's if we get the 2018 Trevor Williams, fantastic. If we get 2019 Trevor Williams, then we have to go to the bullpen a lot, and our bullpen's going to be terrible this year. Um, who else do they have? They have Stephen Brault and Chad Cool. Not Chad Cole. Stephen Brault and, um, oh, I should have written this down. That's the thing. Some of these guys are forgettable. Derek Holland is, is somebody they picked up over the offseason. He's going to start. Um, oh, Chad Cool was going to split time with Stephen Brault. That's right. And then, man. Oh, Mitch Keller. Mitch Keller is, uh, you know, highly touted, but was bad last year. But if you look at, if you take the stats only from the games where he was good, he's really good. <laughs> I don't know. I hope Mitch Keller does well. I feel like he could be Tyler Glass now 2.0, but I feel like they might give him more of, of, of a leash. I don't know. Point is, there's some decent players in there. I think people have this knee-jerk reaction to, like, 
if the Pirates don't have the stars, they think, there they go, they're going to be 15 and 45. It's like, the Pirates are rarely, like, one of the worst, at least in the last decade, the Pirates are rarely one of the worst teams in the league. When they're bad, they're going to win, like, 67, 68 games. But they haven't, like, been around the low 60s in wins or the high 50s since 2010. So, but I think people always are like, ah, they're going to draft first or second. No, they're not. I wouldn't be surprised if, like, in 2021, the Pirates are picking sixth or seventh. You know, but like I said, I don't know. This is, I said 26 and 34. Oh, well. Anyway, um, it's it's nice to have sports back. And I with the 16 team make, making playoffs, I think they could actually be decent. Or not decent. They could be, they could be in it late. Not as a, as a function of them being good, but more as a function of MLB playoffs being expanded. But who knows? Maybe they'll surprise me. We'll see. Let's go, Bucks.